at the ends of the earth, out of sight in a frozen wilderness. There are signs that the world is changing. Until a few years ago, the sea of Canada's far north was covered by ice, even in high summer. Now, there is more and more open water here. I'm Mark Beaumont. I've chosen to devote my life to epic journeys. I've cycled around the world and the American continent from top to bottom, climbing its highest mountains on the way. Now, I want to push myself to the extreme places of the planet in an entirely new way. This time, I'm not alone. I'm joining an expedition with five others, led by polar veteran Jock Wisher. It's an expedition whose very viability reveals the shocking truth about what is happening to the planet. The ice at the North Pole is melting. It has created a brand new challenge that until recently could not exist. We are rowing high into the Arctic. To a place that has only ever been reached across solid ice. We plan to be the first to reach it by boat. We are heading into one of the world's most hostile environments. Taking on challenges for which there is no rule book. We were not expecting this. <laughs> the next few hours is crucial. Battling fast flowing ice that could destroy the boat. Arctic weather. And miserable. Mental and physical exhaustion. And lethal cold. Racing to reach our goal in the vanishingly brief Arctic summer. Six of us forced to get along. <laughs> get away from me. Days away from any hope of rescue. An extraordinary journey through some of the world's most remote seaways that will bring us face to face with the profound changes unfolding on planet Earth. We are rowing the Arctic. Resolute Bay in Canada's far north. Its name in the local Inuit language is the place with no dawn. It's one of the most isolated towns in the world and reputed to be the coldest. But right now, it's the height of summer and there are signs that this part of the world may be changing beyond recognition. Resolute in July is the start point of a new kind of expedition. Nobody has ever tried what we are about to do. For the next month or more, in a team with five other oarsmen, we'll be rowing this tiny boat 450 miles into the high Arctic. Many, many, many polar expeditions have started from this point, I and mean, it's famous for polar journeys. But nobody has ever gone out by ocean rowing boat north of here in Canada. It's a massive step into the unknown. And uh, I mean, I love that. I've always been inspired by journeys that have never been attempted before. Our leader, Scots born Jock Wisher, has launched expeditions from Resolute a dozen times. In 1996, Jock left Resolute on foot 
to certify the position of the North Magnetic Pole. In the depths of winter, all this is four foot thick, solid ice. You can walk across it. We are hoping to reach the very same point as Jock walked to in 96. But this time, in late summer, and in a rowing boat. Well, this is it, the off the four years in the, in the coming, and here we are now, you know, just, a, just incredible. Everyone, as a team, is incredibly sort of uh, strong. You can see that everyone's sort of um, saying the right things, but I'm sure quietly everyone's uh, nervous about what the heck it's going to be like out there. I think it's crazy, but it's, it's what you're into. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I give them a uh, 6 out of 10 chance. Alright, you ready? Fully dying. Ready? Go. Jock holds power boating records and polar firsts, but this is the culmination of his obsession to combine polar travel and rowing in a single expedition. It's the ocean in me, it's the explorer in me, it's the sailor in me. All these things have just uh, just come together and something that uh, has driven me on for the last four years to achieve this. We're in a part of the world I'd never really thought about before this expedition. The heart of the Canadian archipelago. Thousands of wild, desolate islands reaching into the extreme north. Our destination is 450 miles away, the 1996 position of the North Magnetic Pole. The Magnetic Pole slowly drifts over the Earth's surface, so it's moved on since Jock walked over solid ice to get there in 96. The big question is, could the summer melt open the way through for a boat? It's a crazy idea of Jock's, but for the first time, it might just be possible. Arctic sea ice always melts to some extent in the summertime. The difference is that in recent years, there's been a lot less sea ice in summer than there was even a decade ago. Something is changing up here. I'm not just joking. I, I've seen, I, I, I live here. I know, I, I've seen it. I noticed it. I live with it. Let's go back to 1959. The ice goes up to six feet. Today, it goes three, four feet. That's all. I'm totally blown away by how unarctic summer feels up here. Almost like filming in the Mediterranean. For the first few days, we're going to have a little support boat. It's actually smaller than our rowing boat, but it does have an engine on it. So if anything went wrong right at the start, then we've got a little bit of help there. It also gives my producer, Matt, the chance to film us in the Arctic Ocean because I'm on board and it's going to be impossible to get shots of the boat rowing at any other time. They'll go as far as their fuel will take them. Then we're on our own, until we reach the finish, where we'll be hoping the weather holds long enough for a plane to land on the nearest island and get us home. Jock 
has handed the day-to-day -day running of the expedition to two experienced mariners, international yachtsman Rob Sleep and Mark Del Stange. Mark is an ex-fireman, Mount Everest veteran and now super yacht skipper. We know that the elements are going to be the time they're going to be dead against us. And when they are against us, they can be bloody horrible. You mean the wind? Yeah. And then the ice. The ice coming down. It's just, there's, no, there's no magic carpet ride on this one. Um. <laughs> we were not expecting this. Back here up on your bike or back in, back in. We always knew there'd be sea ice on the way. We we're using satellite images to help us avoid it. But they can only offer so much detail. Watch oars on right. Jock and Mark have designed the boat with a Kevlar reinforced hull and a steel prow. Okay. It can take the odd knock from the ice, but there's a limit. The ice is just like blocks of concrete, basically. You know, it doesn't look that solid, but you, the blades are really flimsy. One can play against sort of a large chunk of ice. Even, or even a relatively small chunk, you can see there's a lot of uh, mass there. So, yeah, quite interesting. If we were to get stuck, the boat has sled runners in the bottom, so it can be dragged across ice. But this is the most dangerous kind of ice. Too small and unstable for us to pull onto. We're very lucky. There's little wind and the blocks are not on the move. But if there's this much sea ice for the rest of the trip, the expedition will fail. If we can get out and find some clear water, we'll, we'll get some good miles done, but it's incredibly slow going through here. It's too clear. Back up to it's back up to two and a half knots in the right direction. We've escaped, but we've got a big open water crossing ahead. With all this sea ice around, there's no way we can fling ourselves straight into it. It's good to be back on shore. Now it's polar bears we need to worry about. All advice in the Arctic is avoid polar bears by staying away from the water's edge because that's where the bears come to feed on seals. But, you know, we <laughs> that's exactly where we're going to be all the time. Uh, moving through the sea ice and then actually on the shore. So we're in the bears' territory. So we need to be pretty careful. We're carrying two shotguns. We all know how to use them, but the last thing we want to do is shoot a bear. It's more to scare them off if we do get too close. It's no joke. We've already seen polar bears near Resolute, albeit from a distance, and mainly in the water. I was surprised to find out they're superb swimmers. They can smell prey from many miles away, and they are powerful, silent hunters. When they attack humans, it's because they intend to kill and eat. They're a credible risk we've accepted as part of being in this amazing place. This is uh, really the, the Arctic in, in all its grandeur, really. Um, you know, you feel the, the loneliness, you, know, you feel the emptiness of the place, uh, you feel the scale of the place. It's just remarkable. What keeps on making me come up here? It, it's a whole number of things, but it's still the. I think because it is still one of the last of the frontiers. You know, it's still there's still things to be seen here, things to be done here. 
everywhere else has been been done and uh, uh, you know I, I love doing my first so here we are doing something which uh, you know logistically is one of the the most difficult poor ex exercises in years just not kidding our chances of getting through this ice have taken a turn for the worse if we were out rowing in that It'd be very, very hard to maneuver with ice moving that fast. How long will that as anyone would have? It's, it's not going to be us. Sea ice moves unpredictably with wind and currents. It could easily crush our boat. What happens to me? There's nothing to do but wait. All the other stuff is going on. Patience pays off. The wind has veered. The ice is now pinned against the shore. We're praying the ice stays where it is. We're taking on the Wellington Channel. We're heading along the bottom of Cornwallis Island, then leaving the relative safety of the coast to cross the notoriously unpredictable Wellington Channel. We still don't know for sure if the channel is clear of ice. We can't see into it until we pass the headland. The answer that could make or break the expedition is revealed round the corner. The reality is unbelievable. The Wellington Channel, 600 miles north of the Arctic Circle, is completely clear. Perfect rowing conditions for now, but the clock is ticking. The Arctic winter is never far away. Today it's a balmy 10 degrees centigrade. In September, only a month from now, it'll drop to well below zero, and the sea will begin to refreeze. We have a narrow window in which to complete the journey. But with every year, that window is getting bigger, according to our support boat skipper. Started noticing uh, approximately four or five years ago. The ice is disappearing sooner, and uh, our summers are lasting longer. Can you get me a lot of long, please, mate? Come on. Dave Manns is a soldier, competitive oarsman, and oceanographer. Seventy-four four eight point one. He has the job of taking readings for sea temperature and salt content. It might help scientists back home understand precisely why the ice is disappearing so fast. The extent of summer ice has fluctuated over the 30 years or so since monitoring began. But the overall trend is retreat, at an astonishing rate of 12% a decade. The studies have shown that uh, using satellite imagery, that, that that is definitely happening. And there's potential that within 20 or 30 years, uh, the North Pole will be completely ice-free uh, in the summer months. It's that general trend that we've seen as sea ice retreat that has made this expedition possible. Yeah. It's amazing to be out here, 11 o'clock at night, beautiful sunshine out in shorts and t-shirt in the middle of the Arctic. It's just ridiculous. We're rowing in shifts through the night.
But up here in summer, there is no night. It's the first time I've actually seen Midnight Sun. It's beautiful and strange. At 75 degrees north, the sun dips low, then rises again, forever circling round and round. a.m. and uh, we're on the final shift of the oars. We're just a couple of miles from Devon Island and it's been, it's been a pretty long night. Uh, everyone's done well. How's that Billy? Uh, it was quite hard, I have to say. What a flight fella. Those three hour shifts uh, do get to you when you're sleep deprived. managed to cross the Wellington Channel and reach Devon Island, one of the largest uninhabited landmasses on Earth. Nobody, not even the Inuit, come up here. Few, if any humans, have ever set foot where we are now. We got across the channel without any problems. <laughs> The Arctic isn't one bit what I expected. I thought there'd be snow, but everywhere is just bare gravel. There is so little rainfall, it's technically a desert. Nothing grows. We have to rely on the 800 kilos of food we've brought with us. Even if it is Mark Del Stanch's birthday. Oh, that's lovely. Hot night, brother. Good night, got him going. Let's get it out there, Billy, without dropping in the sea. <laughs> Happy birthday, dear. <laughs> Will I get more feet wet? Happy birthday to you. Hey! 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 I could be digesting that for a while. <laughs> I mean, virtually the days. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was, it was a wonderful talk. The wind has picked up overnight. The beluga whales are on the move, but for us, it's too strong to row in. Before it gets any worse, the support boat crew decide it's time for them to turn back. There's only me filming now. More importantly, any potential rescue mission would take 20 hours or more to reach us. So, we're on our own. I've been to some truly remote places in my time. But I've never felt this isolated.
Yet, for all the vast wilderness around us, bizarrely, we have zero space to ourselves. Right, jump! Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well. Billy Gammon has rowed across the Indian Ocean. <laughs> He's the one with the most experience of sharing such a confined space. <laughs> yep. Got it? <laughs> That's it. It's got it? Yeah. Comfy? That's very comfy. <laughs> very comfy. This is appalling. <laughs> yeah, I cannot film this. It's, the, it's too close to the camera to film. Oh, I hope that doesn't come out. Wait, all that. Look at him. Three in. Three. Just, it, he just, saw this roof. What? Just you, mate. <laughs> you to go, Dave. That is ridiculous. Billy, what's your favourite favourite part of the coffin bunk? Um, it's the feeling of anxiety, <laughs> which is brought on by extreme claustrophobia. That's <laughs> good. Those were really good nights. <laughs> Shut, it's freezing. Oh no, please get your bottom closer <laughs> to my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's <the dream. laughs> Sugar. <laughs> get away from me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a bit wet down here. Should that be a concern? Nah. No, it's is it wet though, please? Wet or cold? It's in your pee bottle here last night, <laughs> though. <laughs> The cabin is unbearable. I'm six foot three, and Dave is used to military life outdoors. We're relocating to a tent. I'm happy out here with my thermos for tent and my gun. <laughs> How was your concern about camping out here? On the beer, right? Dave and I are in the tent, which means we have lots of room. But it also means, uh, well, Jock's worried that uh, we're going to get eaten by bears. <laughs> Not gonna happen. <laughs> Moving away from you guys, it's at least 50 feet. Moving away. Stay inside, fire your banger. Okay, mate. All right. Yeah. We'd like you to leave the tent and be on board tonight, please. Yeah, yeah no props. Thank you, mate. It's just gone 10 o'clock. We've been in the tent for just over an hour. I guess one of the guys was out on the boat and um, there's a polar bear outside. So luckily they saw it and that was them firing bear bang and it's, uh, it's gone away. But... Um, Going back to the boat, we're not going to stay on uh, in the tent tonight. Not if there's uh, not if there's uh, bears really close. They might walk them back. <laughs> now, Volk, you've had your lesson now, right? There you go, Marky. Very close call. Which way did they go off? Took off up over the ridge. So in that direction over there. Smell we were here. You could smell you were there, yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't being aggressive, it was just sniffing us out, but you know, there's no way we can fall asleep now it's here. Is all good, see It's good to put some distance between us and the bear encounter. The wind's helping us make the miles. Rowing into the wind is miserable, hard work. When it's behind us though, that's a different game. We're 
are making unnaturally fast progress up Devon Island. This is as far as the first explorers in this part of the Arctic got to. They were Britons too, sent here in steam-powered ships after the Napoleonic Wars to seek out the Northwest Passage between Atlantic and Pacific. One of them, Sir John Franklin, was exploring these perilous seaways in 1845 when he famously disappeared. Ice to our north is breaking up with the summer melt and the pieces float south. But the ice gets jammed in the narrow gaps between islands. Bottlenecks, just like the one we're heading towards. The satellite images confirm that there's pack ice just around the corner. What they can't tell us though, is what routes take through it once we get there. I think this has been the, the calm before the storm. We're into the sea ice. We're into the, the, the big push across the north which we knew would be the toughest part. We need to keep going because uh, three weeks time, four weeks time, the weather will change and this will all start to freeze in again. finally hit the bottleneck and sure enough the pack ice but we're confident we can weave our way through it when the weather is good you've got to move you know it's no use just sort of uh, uh, going on and hoping that this weather is going to continue that's really unlikely we're veering away from Devon Island to start crossing the huge Belcher Channel first stop Exmouth Island, only 18 miles away. Another reminder of the polar bear presence. Although a single bear will patrol tens of thousands of square kilometers of sea ice in search of food, melting ice is restricting their territory. We weren't expecting this ice field to be so dense. We've been following a lead for about an hour and a half, a section of open water, but uh, it's just got more and more closed in. Yeah. That is a great little steering. Can you get a chance? Yeah. Left door. Um, you should get both. There you go. Again. Yeah, close that one here. That was like inch perfect. We've really got to pick our reeds carefully, massive man. Because if we, if we, uh, the weather changes and we're stuck out there, you know, in something like this, but the, but, but in a decent wind, could uh, could end everything. I think. A lot of trouble. We've been going through it for over two hours now, and there's quite a few times we thought we were in a complete cul-de-sac. We couldn't go anywhere, but just found a little lead of water through and uh, weaving our way through this complete labyrinth. We're not quite sure how far it goes on. It's, um, it's now nine o'clock at night and it looks like we'll be rowing on through the night to try and find a way through it. There is a bit of a worry that um, we might not be able to get through this, in which case it's a long way to backtrack and we just hope the ice hasn't uh, closed in behind us. <laughs> I can't help going through the scenarios in my head. 
if we got trapped, we could pull the boat up onto the ice. But then what? We'd be drifting helplessly on a disintegrating ice floe with the nearest Coast Guard icebreaker a thousand miles away. Um, I really don't see a way through there. What about left? It looks like it's, it's all joys. It's all joys. The leads have vanished. Uh, I'm going to head for the nearest shore. Fish straight ahead. Anyway, we can't get through, we can't get through. We've sidetracked trying to take different routes, and each one's a complete dead end, so... We're going to head back to the, the nearest shore. There's no way we can we can stop in the middle here. But if we had hoped for a rapid retreat back to land, we're in for a nasty surprise. It's only by turning around that we realise the pack has been building up behind us ever since we left shore. So that's closed up as well. So, ah, oh, man, this is tomorrow. Boat's getting, boat's getting knocked about. Boat's getting getting about. Boat's Horrible getting crunches. Uh, yeah, awful crunches. And the next few hours, crucial. Just got to get out of this ice. Hope to goodness we can find a lead, a runway, and just go for it. Yeah. I don't really want to stick around here too much longer. But we know now, I think, if we can get out of this, if we can get out of this, that um, we can't really take on fields of ice like this. Yeah. We've got to be able to see the lead all the way to the island. We've been in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Lessons learned. A little bit more humble. That's a good way of putting it. That could have been game over. <laughs> Very easy. Now we've all finished breakfast, can we just have a just spend a few minutes together and just sort of first of all go to a little bit of debrief of, um, of what happened last night, the good points and, and, and the bad points, because we actually got ourselves into a very dangerous situation. Yeah? I think we need to be willing and open to calling it quits a bit earlier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave made a very I just hope that people don't get unnerved by what happened last night because I think it could affect uh, whether we get there or not. It's a dangerous expedition. Uh, we knew that before we started. Um, and I think people need to accept that rather than just think, oh, we'll wait for something safe, wait for a safe bit, because it might not be a safe bit. There's going to be a time we're going to say, no, we've got to get in there and do it. Where Jock walked to back in 96 is uh, 
It's just over the horizon there. It's only about 80, 90 miles. But I would just like to get on our way. It's all just too solid to be able to get a boat through at the moment. And a lot of people thought this would be a crazy journey or, or an impossible journey. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It may still prove impossible, you don't know. We're desperate to escape the bottleneck. Two minutes, chap. Just two minutes. The last thing we need is fog. One minute, chap. Uh, One minute. Of the uh, contents of my play bag. Come on, James. Three seconds. We're almost at the moment. Are you ready? All right. If we keep inching our way up the coast, we might spot a break in the pack ice. Again, look out the left door. But forward progress depends on seeing a way through. Hard enough in clear weather, in dense fog, is absurd. Well, you want to make a turn down over there. We'll just come from there, Jock. Yeah. We'll have to come from over there. No, no, but that's, we're going that way. What? We're going that way. I know that, but the land is over there. What? The land is right in front of me. It's right, Jock. It's right, it's right. Getting lost out here doesn't bear thinking about. We can't risk wandering off into the same ice field that almost finished us two days ago. We have to make landfall again. Moving out there in fog is just so disorientating. It's, and knowing there's ice around just makes you really super cautious. So it's yeah, jumpy. Twelve behind Billy, you could wipe the little smirk off his Bear face. Bear in mind that I've been deducted ten points. So, well, that was because you cheated. That's you cheated. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky still to be in this. Test. <laughs> fog suddenly clears. Guns at the ready for polar bears, we need to get to the high ground fast if we want to spot a route through the bottleneck. Right, that is absolutely incredible, isn't it? Well worth it. That is absolutely incredible. What do you reckon that's two, three miles for coming? Yeah, two and a half at least. Awesome. Look at that. Incredible. Well, we must be a good uh, 70, 80 meters up from the from the sea here, and uh, it's a great vantage point. You can see a route out here. Definitely. If we just pick our way through these bits by the shore, even down here, um, we'll be out into the open water. I think we need decisive action. Definitely. We've managed to clear the worst of the sea ice right next to the shore and it's uh, it's getting more open here, which is just fantastic. Open water this far north is not what I had imagined. Perhaps no surprise, many are expecting the seaways in this part of Canada to become viable shipping routes as the ice melts. The thought of container ships up here is bizarre, but for the expedition, this open water is very good news. We've finally broken through the bottleneck. Two thirds of the route in the bag, and we've begun the island hopping stage of the expedition. 
Sore Island will be our jumping off point for the final push to the finish. After five days and some tough rowing, this is Thor Island's greeting. The temperature has plummeted. We'll close the door as soon as you come up. We know that the sea will refreeze soon for winter. The clock is ticking. On top of that, Significant snowfall could prevent a plane from landing and getting us back to civilization. It feels like the freeze is just around the corner. The temperature's dropped a lot and, uh, well, in the next two, three weeks, this is all going to start to freeze in again. Our only opportunity to make it is, uh, is really in the next week. We are now over 400 miles from the nearest human settlement. When you get ashore and leave the crew, it's incredibly quiet out here. The only sound is the wind and sometimes the ice moving. What we're seeing here up in this journey is, is a real s you know, short snapshot of time. Ten years ago you couldn't have done this. There's no way you could have rowed a boat up here. And in ten years time, well it might be easy. That's what I thought. In a week or so, the sea will refreeze. But the wind has just shifted in our favour. Are we on first? Yep. The ice predictions are for a clear passage all the way to the finish. Less than 50 miles to go. This is the last big push. Really think we want to just crack on tonight and just really try and get there. Even we've got to just work through the night. I mean, it's perfect weather. We might never get this opportunity again. sets for the first time since the beginning of our journey. Winter is getting near. The 1996 position of the North Magnetic Pole, our destination, sits in Deer Bay, just off Elifringness Island. I think my luck's run out. Uh, nothing at the moment other than solid ice. Polar travel is nothing like climbing a mountain, where you're heading for a clear summit. We'll only know we've reached our destination when the GPS says so. What we don't know 
is whether it'll be open water or pack ice. Easy there. We're going to stop here, Jock, and it's looking very much like we're going to need to drag. So. It's the most solid wall of ice we've ever come across. Well, if you could hold us up a bit there. It's now uh, 11 o'clock and uh, we're within two miles, but we're going nowhere. We'd all start to believe like we were there. It was a done deal uh, after such a great afternoon and then all through the night rowing. We just kept going and going, expecting ice to stop us. And um, nobody slept at all, but everyone was just hugely excited about getting getting to the finish. So now we've hit this huge section of ice and there's simply no way around it. We're going to have to pull the boat for the first time. This is going to be the, the biggest test and, you know, by far the most dangerous thing that we've done. grateful that we've got weather like this because if the wind was up and it was uh, you know low visibility out here it would be utterly utterly awful and you know it's quite a warm day and we can take our time to try and hack our way through here. One, two, three. The boat weighs well over a ton. If we were to get caught underneath it, it could break every bone in our body. get sucked under the ice by currents. Six hours later, we're still caught in the labyrinth. Without us realising, the entire ice pack has been moving with the ocean current. And with it, our finish line. We're going around it at the moment. We're what's called boxing it. Like this. Every time we try and make a beeline for the finish, the ice flow drifts us off course. We've definitely been on sort of each side of it, and the Latin long point that we're actually trying to reach keeps sort of evading us. Uh, by the time you actually pull the boat across, it's incredibly slow work. But meter by meter, we are getting closer. We've been at it already for about eight, nine hours, and... Uh, Somewhere out there, just behind me, less than half a mile away, 
is our destination. We're 432 feet away. That's pretty old, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We've run out of leaves. So from here on in, it's over the ice itself. But it's literally there. It's it's right there. Ready? Okay. Oh. Ready? We set out to get a boat to the 1996 Magnetic North Pole. And that's what we're going to do. the end of it. Uh, I don't think I'll be I don't think I'll be rowing any any more boats anywhere to strange out of the way places. I think I've done my business now. But yeah. 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 Those last ten hours pushing through the ice were incredibly tough. Everyone just feels a little bit beat and uh, need a good night's sleep. Tomorrow we need to figure out how to get out of here. Once we get back I think then the celebrations will begin, but uh, definitely an amazing place to take a moment and realise that you've uh, you've rode a boat up here. Overnight, our ice flow has drifted a mile in the wrong direction, and meanwhile, the leads are freezing solid. We have to move now. So everyone's packing up the boat at the moment, and we need to make it that way. Isaacson, our only possible exit point where a plane can pick us up. That's what we're trying to break through and walk through at the moment. That was about four mil thick yesterday. That's probably nearer 15 now. It's getting desperate. The dreadful irony is, we only got this far because there was so little ice further south. But now the Arctic is threatening to trap us. We got here just in the nick of time. I think uh, any later, and this is all going to be completely iced in. Okay, we are. We made it. Just. What an incredible last chapter. These final days in the Arctic 
will stay with me for the rest of my life. Civilization, or relative anyway. We will forever be members of a very select little club because I don't see anybody else having a go at this. There was questions to the end as to whether the plane could get in today, so just brilliant to see it on the ground. <laughs> We're out of here. Yes. In the end, the ice almost stopped us. But there's something bittersweet about having made it. We now know the expedition was only possible because this year's summer ice melt was the second greatest since records began. This may be the ends of the earth, but what it means for the rest cannot be ignored. To see the reality for ourselves firsthand has been unforgettable.